Do you believe that he will pull off this upset in New Orleans? I don't, and I do think it would be an upset, not just according to the odds makers. I expect the Saints to win. The Bucks are peaking at the right time. There's no question. They look like they're firing on all cylinders. But let's keep in mind, when I, and I know it's hard to imagine. People think, well, can you imagine Tom Brady being beaten three times by a team in his own division who he knows he has to beat? Boy, that's hard to imagine. But in fact, what history bears out is if one team beats another twice in the regular season, they're going to do it again in the playoffs. Because the fact is, as hard as it is to imagine that you're going to lose three times, the fact that they lost twice to that team indicates they're not quite as good, or at least the matchup isn't good for them. What's the, first of all, Saints had a better record. Saints were the better team. And that was dealing with a catastrophic injury to Drew Brees. That was dealing with Michael Thomas not often available. Um, uh, Emmanuel Sanders not available at times. But now Drew Brees comes in with his full complement of weapons. And what was the issue with, in terms of the Styles matchup for Brady and the Bucks with the Saints? It's that they have a front four that can get pressure on the quarterback. And Tom Brady, no, no quarterback likes pressure, but especially not Tom Brady when you don't have to blitz, when you can just bring four. And, and they can do it. The Saints can do it. They can get pressure on Tom Brady with their front four. That's bad for Brady. And yes, Drew Brees has been less than great in the playoffs recently. But a lot of that seems to be that the attrition got to him. He's not a big, strong guy like Brady or these quarterbacks. He's a smaller guy. Like, you can imagine the accumulation of punishment catching up. But maybe that was a silver lining in the injury. He didn't have to play football all those weeks. I expect to see a better rested, fresher Drew Brees now in these playoffs than we have in seasons past. And Stephen A., I expect Brees with his full complement of weapons and that defense that has twice so far pressured Tom Brady to do it again and win the game. Max Kellerman, I don't disagree with anything that you're saying from a football standpoint. I have no argument to make other than this. I just have a feeling. You go down 24-7 before losing 34-23 to in New Orleans in the season opener. We all know that, and New Orleans ran away with that game. The second time they go to Camp Tampa, and they just blitzed them on Sunday night. They were up 38 to nothing before the final score was 38-3. to Tom Brady didn't have a good game in either scenario. You had Antonio Brown the second game around. It didn't matter. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin couldn't do but so much. Gronkowski couldn't do but so much. I just find it very, very hard to stomach, to believe, as much as I love my man Drew Brees, I find it very hard to believe that after getting blitzed on two occasions against this same team, that you go there and for a third time you get ramrodded too. This is Tom Brady that we're talking about here. It's, I just find it unfathomable that there are no adjustments, that there's nothing learned from those annihilations that took place at, by, at, by the hands of the New Orleans Saints. I just find it almost impossible to believe that as good as the Saints are, as better as they have been, and even though anybody and their mother would be justified in picking the Saints for this game, I just find this to be one of those games, Mac, that set up for Brady and the crew to find a way to escape. I certainly expect the game to be close no matter what. I really, really do. I do not expect a blowout this time around. But it would not surprise me at all because of the manner in which the Saints have so manhandled the Bucks in the two occasions that a third time is not a charm. That somehow, some way, that 43-year-old Mr. Geriatric himself summons up something. And Antonio Brown joins the fray. And he's become more of a priority for Tom Brady as the season has progressed, which you pointed out over a week ago. Obviously, with, other, with the additional weapons in Evans and Godwin, Godwin's got to stop dropping passes. We get it. Excuse me. It can't just be Leonard Fournette out there running. Hopefully, Ronald Jones II will be back. I'm just saying, I find it very difficult to believe that for the third go-round, you get shellacked by the same team in the same season when you are led by Tom Brady. I find that very difficult yeah, to stomach. I can't see it. I'm I going don't with see the a Bucks. shellacking either. I'm going but with I the Bucks. See, but I see a Saints. I I'm going with the Saints, and I don't see yeah. a shellacking either. First of all, the Saints are at home, right? And I want to. And I and I want to um, mention. Does that mean anything this I season? I want to answer two of the points that. Right. A little bit. It means a little. Okay. I mean, yeah. they beat them at home worse than they beat them on the road, right, so right. far. And they beat them twice. 
I want to answer two of the points you brought up. I think they're good ones. First, I think uh, Antonio Brown's a very good point. Antonio Brown, if he gets to, if he's had enough time now to be Antonio Brown again, I think mm -hmm. people are all sleeping on what that means. Antonio yeah, Brown are. is way better than Evans or Godwin if he's Antonio Brown. And those mm -hmm. are excellent players, right? <laughs> right, they're excellent players and they're not close to Antonio Brown if Brown is healthy. Antonio Brown is arguably one of the five best receivers who ever lived, and he's in his prime right now. Physically, he should be. So if he's truly healthy and you see him trending at, in that direction and, and mm. rather integrated into the team and, and, no, and, and is back to being Antonio Brown, that is a huge weapon, Stephen A., and that's why I think the game can be close. I expect him to be featured. That's number one. Number two, mm -hmm. motivation. You talk about Tom Brady, just hard to believe him losing. Okay, think about the motivation for each guy. Brady's motivation is just to win as always. He's going to be back next year. His arm still looks like it has some juice. And oh, really? his team looks poised to make oh, really? another did run next year. Did you hear that, Molly? Yeah, it does. Did, I, you, did, you, hear, did you hear that, Molly? Yeah, his Stephen arm has, Don't yeah, you heard that? His A. arm. Hey, that, wait, hey, if yeah. we bring his up the clip or not like that, Max, you said, you said we, his is this arm, where, Max. You said his arm is live. for five minutes? Yes. yes. You said yeah. that, Max. Compared to Drew Brees, Tom Brady, even as... Even as his arm looked weaker to me in recent seasons, it still looked stronger than Drew Brees's. And I'm not talking about accuracy. I mean, strength of arm. I don't think anyone would argue that, and I never did. But my point is this. He knows he's coming back. What's the motivation now? Well, people might say something like, I might say, Tom Brady lost a playoff game in his division, right? Suddenly, when you have to go up against another great quarterback, because Drew Brees is a great quarterback in the division, not like the AFC East for 20 years, no great quarterbacks ever. So occasionally a decent one, but it was the most atrocious 20-year period in the history of any division in the NFL for quarterback play. And so in that, under those circumstances, Brady always won the division. You win one home game, you go to the, you go to the, you go to the uh, uh, championship game.